Hi, Ms. Chamba. Thank you so much for taking out the time for this interview. Uh, so this Spotlight interview is uh, going to be a series of interviews that we're going to be conducting as a part of our What We Need campaign in India. And you might have heard of the What We Need campaign. It's an annual campaign that we organize to advocate for the rights of persons with psychosocial disabilities in the Asia Pacific region. Okay. Yeah. And also, I uh, wanted to ask for your consent. Uh, are you okay with the fact that this interview is uh, being recorded? Yes. So, um, thank you so much once again. Let's move on to the interview. Can you tell us a little about yourself and your work? Uh, my name is Shampa. Uh, I had been working on the disability uh, field for almost three decades now. Uh, it's a very, very interesting journey because uh, when I started working, uh, I neither identified myself as a disabled person uh, nor was a caregiver, so more from professional point of view. Uh, but uh, I mean, it happened to me uh, in a like phased manner uh, initially there was a family member who was having uh, we we didn't just uh, the term psychosocial disability at that point of time used to say mental illness so had uh, uh, mental health issues and i started uh, being a primary caregiver uh, of that person and that sort of uh, um, made my own uh, mental health uh, difficult. Uh, I mean, dealing with that in itself also needs a lot of, uh, because you are, as it is, you are working outside for disability rights, which is a difficult issue. Uh, so there's a lot of stress. And uh, here in my own family, there is a person who needed constant care. So it also takes toll on my own mental health. And so it, it's, of course, now, I identify myself as a person who is psychosocial disability. Thank you so much. It's an, indeed an industrial journey. Um, so my second question to you is, what does advocacy mean to you? And what is your advocacy strategy that you have been using in your line of work? Uh, again, as I said, when I started my uh, work, it was uh, like three years ago. I mean, the whole concept of disability was different. So we were really into more uh, rehabilitation mode. So uh, like uh, not so much of cure, but more like how to rehabilitate a person who's got uh, some kind of uh, intellectual disabilities or uh, like finding some occupation for someone. But gradually my work actually changed. Uh, so at some point of time, I realized that uh, doing individual casework, it's important to do individual casework because people need support. But in a larger scale, uh, I mean, it's finally, uh, it's a state responsibility. And uh, so you have to do some advocacy with, uh, government uh, officials, uh, with the politicians, with the, all people who are, have any kind of, who have some kind of authority. Because uh, if you want to change lives of many, many people, a large number of people, then you cannot just work on one-to-one -one, uh, rehabilitation. And our advocacy had been, uh, again, uh, I mean, like I say, everything changes through time. And advocacy strategy initially, we thought maybe uh, filing a PIL might help. And, uh, and of course it helps. It's, I'm not saying it, it doesn't help, but then again, we saw that uh, uh, when you fi file a PIL, uh, the government uh, gets, uh, uh, even if we get a good judgment, Sometimes government is not ready to accept uh, that, I mean, to implement a judgment. So for me, work is like 
uh, you know, one can say it's not supposed in a zigzag kind of manner. It's not really a straight line. So you have to go back to again talking to a, a, a government official saying, see, this is a judgment we have. Uh, so I'm, I have been part of uh, like the processes where uh, we changed many laws in our country. Uh, I mean, because it's 30 years and uh, I mean, when I started working, there was no disability law. Uh, so there was a mental health act, but not uh, the person with disabilities act. And uh, so and I personally focus, my work is more uh, based on uh, violence against women who are disabled. So, and that's again another uh, area of work where a lot of advocacy was required. And it's, it's an ongoing thing. So you have to, since it is never a priority for any government, any state uh, actors, so you have to sort of uh, keep on using all kinds of work. Uh, so it can be like writing a letter to the uh, police training uh, authorities, writing a letter to the su uh, Supreme Court judges, or uh, actually uh, doing changing the law. Yeah. yeah, so you do have like a great line of experience. Being an activist and a person with a psychosocial disability, what are the challenges that you faced while advocating for rights of persons with disabilities? And more specifically, like you mentioned, young girls, uh, violence against young girls with disabilities. It's, it's a very big challenge because I work in the space of uh, cross disability movement. And that is something uh, where, again, a space where uh, people who have visible disability get some kind of prominence. Because you can see uh, something. You can see a person who's using a crutch. You can see a person who's uh, uh, unable to see. So uh, those kind of uh, disabilities always get uh, priorities. Uh, and uh, and it's, it's for everywhere, like the, uh, in the public, uh, in, for general public, they are ready to um, not, I uh, don't say ready, but I prefer to talk to them as uh, uh, someone who's got a disability. For a person who's got psychosocial disability, it's not uh, visible. So people do not even think, consider you uh, that they, you have a issue and that you are part of the movement and uh, so when uh, and uh, a very big challenge is always when we are talking when I, I usually when I introduce myself in a cross disability forum like that so I always uh, introduce myself as a person who's got psychosocial disabilities and I have seen that I mean if, even now that this uh, mental health uh, awareness the uh, on 10th October, I, I remember I once wrote for uh, one uh, one article in a Bangla the newspaper, and they actually asked me to write for it. And when they edited it, they just uh, edited out that part where I talked about my mental illness, uh, because you know if you you have a psychosocial disability, how can you write? That's a concept. So uh, they wrote, a, they took all, I mean, they actually pre published it, but they just uh, uh, edited that portion out because your legal capacity is all, always questioned. And I mean, uh, in the space of violence against this disabled woman, I mean, this is something, uh, Challenges, I mean, I cannot even uh, stop talking about challenges because it's such a huge, huge area. Uh, firstly, whether uh, be it a man or woman or a transgender person, whether that person if has got some kind of mental health issue, whether uh, that person got the right to give consent itself is not, uh, it's a debated issue. Uh, so when you are talking about violence, so where is the, uh, the violence starts, where does the consent 
the legal capacity to give consent to have sexual relations starts stops everything is questioned uh, and we don't know when we go to court how to prove that here is a consent violated uh, where uh, because people just should believe that the person could of someone who's got mental health uh, issues and you particularly using mental health issue this term because that's the most popular term uh, used in the judiciary or uh, in the, in the, when in the police uh, they don't use the term psychosocial disabilities so it's just a huge challenge you don't even understand uh, the terminology we are using so the legal uh, fraternity do not understand what the what are the languages we are talking about and it's a so from the day one i mean when you start uh, lodging a complaint to police to finally going through a court case it's a huge challenge that is very understandable i think this is the situation in most asian countries as well so um, what are the three main lessons that you've learned so far in your life three main lessons i mean it could be any lesson <laughs> okay three main lessons from my work my life is i mean i will just say and never give up never give up and never give up i mean you just keep on talking about the same thing if you are persistent then change is inevitable and uh, you just say that uh, okay like i've done enough and i'm not getting results you just sit back the moment defeat happens uh, and that is everywhere whether you're doing advocacy or you are working with your own uh, health issues at a personal level uh, or any relationship issues that all of us go through and so lastly what is that one message you'd like to give out to all our other colleagues in this asia is asia for my uh, all colleagues to tci is uh, specific i think the main uh, point i'd like to say is uh, we need to uh, be together uh, because there is a commonality in our situations and we need to learn from each other we need to have more conversations uh, uh, with each other uh, not always maybe in a very formal setting though we try to have formal conversation sometimes what is missing is a personal uh, like if we know each other the journeys of each other because we need to learn and grow together that is very important that's so true thank you so much for taking out the time for us we are very thankful to you for this amazing interview thank you for your time